Technology is not a, a simple thing that we can mess around with, as we can see now. Businesses are suffering, ordinary people are suffering. People are suggesting that shall me like to talk and Prime Minister to support him this thing thing. Why not PNG Power focus on this profitable grid? Where Port Mosby grid, a Ramu grid, a Gessel grid. This is a triple and major grid where MCI are making profit for PNG Power. Now you rouse him some uh, unprofitable you know, operations, also in Kimbe, KVN, uh, Vivek, uh, Daru, all this are up here, and PNG Power makes loss. Meaning, PNG Power by hard to <coughs> bring him fuel come inside of these locations. Now, cost of producing power is almost like one kina 20 toya. And they, have, they are forced to sell it for 80 toya, 90 toya. Province people suffer no good through. Um, uh, Governor, uh, Governor ECP can talk, okay? Province here, yeah, some time, two weeks continuously no power. Even lo Kimbe, people are giving power to the residents in the hospital to the soul. Lo half where me sleep yet, people are also buying 300 liters diesel. Lo every two days once. Every two days. If I was a banker, I wouldn't put my money in PNG power right now. Because I know that by no return long end. Me no got confidence also by got all steps that we are taking and PNG power in its current condition will be able to recover. And it's appropriate now. You know, deserving that you may put in pressure long, Minister. Because you may all get a feeling there's a pain long, failure of Lord PPL. If you want to continue to support PPL, na continue to give him susu long em, na baby food long em, na look out him em. We've got to be strict about who is going to be in charge of that. And that person, or those individuals, need to have very strict performance criteria attached to them. The other thing I did not see in this report was that there is no identification of what are the major loss areas that result in PPL coming to this point where it owes 900 million to its creditors. Is someone going to identify where the major loss making areas are? And is it pertinent for this house to know? You may need Losabe. One M Sunday Street making only losing money, losing money, losing money to the point where they now owe 900 odd million to their creditors. And then on top of that, do we have a risk management strategy for PPL going forward? Most importantly for the country, energy is not a, a simple thing that we can mess around with as we can see now. Businesses are suffering, ordinary people are suffering. We are not expanding the grid. So what risk management strategy are we putting in place to ensure that the country does not arrive at another point in the future where we suffer the same consequences because this is still a monopoly we will still be at the mercy of PNG power. So Sabo Soli walk Krangi, Mibla by still kissing pen yet. So I'd like to see that risk management strategy that guarantees the leaders of this country sitting in this house, but also that guarantees the people of Papua New Guinea that you may can solve this problem once and for all. Now, if we cannot, then there's a fallback position that the government will adopt. And finally, once the good minister is ready and all the hard-working people from Kumul Holdings get to work on PNG Power, I would like to request that the good minister come back to this house and present to the honourable members what the turnaround strategy looks like so that Yumi Olgada can appreciate him. Now Yumi Olgada can look savvy so that we can hold the management and the board of PPL accountable. Thank you very much. The honourable uh, Governor of Hawaiian City. Thank you, um, Mr. Speaker. Lo. Give me a chance to contribute to this uh, debate. From the outset, I'd like to thank you, long Minister. Let me, uh, you may put in plenty of pressure on him. And it's appropriate now, you know, deserving that you may put in pressure on Minister. Because you may all get a feeling there's a pain long, failure of PPL, PNG power. They have not performed well, and the report here confirms it. Now you may step on one last stage where what are we going to do? You may by trust the minister and trust the process that is going on, or you may by suggest the minister for other option. And I want to say from the outset that we should be open to other option. Because uh, Mr. Speaker, I think bottom line is right. You may can ask him you may yet. Suppose you plan get yeah, you plan like invest in money, blah blah. You may all member yeah. Would you honestly? Lord, personal money blow you. Who do you want to put your money in PNG power? Uh, with this current condition, long end? And if you honestly know that your money going in, personal money blow you, your account blow you yet, 
you're going to invest in this company, that it will not bring you any return. If I was a banker, I wouldn't put my money in PNG Power right now, because I know that by no return blogging. Me no got confidence also by got all steps that we are taking, and PNG Power in its current condition will be able to recover. Minister, there's no doubt you are trying your best. You are doing what you can. You're trying to drive the, you know, the uh, board and the management. Now you're coming up with all this uh, uh, structural change over uh, six months. So that we ask, Mr. Speaker, 15 years' time, maybe there will be a re recovery time. Mr. Speaker and honorable members, I don't think we have 15 years. We can't wait for 15 years. Power is essential. Energy is essential to just basic life and then to business, and then to the economy, you will get us away. Mm. Here in Port Mosby, Mr. Speaker, I have to speak on behalf of our people, our, my constituent here in Port Mosby. Mm. People all got to come up, power company, yeah? all the corporates, they have to buy their own generators. Instead of doing their core business, they have to operate their own generator, backup generator, they have to buy fuel, and who pays the cost? They're passing the cost to everyone. The economy cannot function. No investor will come here and set up a manufacturing company if the, if the you know, power is not reliable. And now we are into digital age. All this IT company, they wouldn't dare come to PNG because power is unreliable. But I see, Mr. Speaker, that we are doing the same thing. And Governor Lo Yumi is speaking in Tokyo. When there is a problem, you may find him money now, you may put him inside. And we just get public funds to put it in, in to try to solve this problem. Because that's the easy way out. Well, public buy no doctor dog, you mix him money now. So now we are going into this 1.75 billion to spend over 15 years with a hope that PNG power is going to turn around. Mr. Speaker, me agree one time, Governor Blo is speak. We need radical surgery, or otherwise, let's bite the bullet. Make a critical strategic decision. Mr. Speaker, if you need to fire sale PNG power, let's fire sale it now. Governor, I'm you speak, I'm talk, you mean radical surgery. Me think also, we are at a stage where we have to think about a fire sale. Something got some value we stop yet. You mean sell him, we make strategic decision, sell him so that we can start to have a real recovery about PNGBC. And look at the turnaround now. BSP, you can complain, but BSP, I mean, underpinning the economy now stuff. It's everywhere in PNG. It's going to the Pacific. Now it might go to Asia. Because we made, and the government at the time made a very decisive, critical decision, PNGBC now, if we do not act, maybe and by go nothing. We'll lose all the saving blood people, believe me, all the investment of government. It's better we don't put public funds into it, we just sell it in whatever state it's up. And true value war, right value war, under value war, at least we, you mix in some money back. And then government can buy, retain him some less shares. Mr. Speaker, this is what we did with PNGBC. Now it's a thriving company. Of course, you can complain, complain, you may be, got right to complain. But we must be happy that we, government at the time made a decisive decision. Now we are at the stage where about PNG power. But you mean, go ahead and, uh, you know, get this, spend this uh, 1.75 billion over 15 years. When I'm guaranteed. Me, you know, most of me, me not busy, PNG, uh, PNG power, you work in profit or not, but at least I'm giving service. But we cannot even have service. If, if they make uh, ends meet, like recover all the expense, and by your right too, but we got a big debt. We got a big debt, you need another 1.75 billion in Guantap, another big blood debt too. What's the guarantee by 15 years by come around? Otherwise, we bite the bullet and do a fire sale, whatever the values. We bite the bullet and make a decision that can give us a better outcome for tomorrow instead of same thing. It's early days, maybe it won't deteriorate anymore. You may walk in fire sale if you have to. Honorable uh, Mayor, Honorable uh, Abao, MP Abao. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and to appreciate and commend the Honourable Minister for this very truthful statement that the Minister has given on this entity that all of us have been complaining about for a long, long time. Particularly on my strong belief that governments have proven that we are not good in managing business. When we interfere, businesses never make profit and never expand. Since 2002, when I stood, I've been visiting all the CEOs of the PNG Power, Elcom, PPL. Mr. Speaker, shamefully, when we hosted a meeting of central leaders, the Minister for International Trade came and spoke to us, and he blasted us and saying this power is so close, why haven't you fought for it to come to as far as Kairuku Hiri, Hiri then, and then as far as Abau? He blasted us. Today in the debate, on behalf of the people of Abau, when people are complaining of frequent blackouts in cities, we have been in blackout forever. And nobody seems to be thinking about us for those who have not yet accessed power. But our people above and others that have not yet been connected have been blacked out way before independence and are still there. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, on behalf of the people of above, the Honorable Governor for East Sipic spoke the medical language, which is my TEF. But I want to speak his TEF, who is a contractor. We don't need uh, to rehabilitate the building, do a maintenance. No, we have to build a new house. Demolish it. Change it all together. Government arm's length. Maybe, I'm thinking, maybe put it through IPO, initial public offering, NES fund, provincial governments, private sector. They will then bid and see where the interest is. Rather than waiting for 15 years. I've been waiting for 20 years. I won't be on the floor of parliament for 15 years. I want my people of about to have power today. We've been missing power. And so, like the private companies that are buying generators and solars, we've been living a very expensive life just to have a one switch on for light. Optimizing people and culture. What them kind of optimizing they need? Financial management. Financial management, you plus something? To strengthen it, business recovery, yeah, I agree. We need more injection, but government has too many priorities. And therefore, in this instance, I think, Minister, we should look at the other serious options rather than follow these eight steps for the next 15 years. And so, him, Honorable Speaker, providing electricity, we're not going to create new technology to do it. No, Katya. Hydro systems have proven. Solar systems is tap. All the IPPs are hydro, and our gas is there. It's not new technology, so you go and find out which technology is good to expand the power to the rest of the country. No, God, them. same technology is tap. Yeah. Honorable Speaker, that's my honest opinion. Government has proven no good in running businesses. Private sector out there, I think they have the business acumen, the capability, management and financial capability to participate. Why don't we give them a chance? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Governor Blonga. Uh, what's the <laughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I've been a minister for this particular uh, SOE uh, for almost like uh, two years. I thought you by look Shavelomina by giving me opportunity. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, one thing we fail to understand also that we keep saying that we want the entire nation to be connected. We want the grids to be extended. At what cost? We start by funding this extension of this grid and all those things. <laughs> PNG Power is a power generating company and, you know, giving power, then it is possible. But to connect the entire country, you know, that is not possible and we need billions and billions of kina. You know, we all the time talk about some community projects connecting to rural areas and all those things. Who will be funding it in, in any commercial business? If PNG Power is a private company, will that private company, you know, fund all those rural areas if there is no, uh, you know, commercial point of view that they can generate income? And you have to invest like one grid, like uh, starting from new power coming to uh, Garagu or into Port Mosby, it costs like almost like uh, 30 million kina or 40 million kina just to transport power. Then there is also inconsistency, you know, projects which we do some kind of knee-jerk investments where you have like much more bigger power to transport with new power producing almost 50, 54 megawatt. 
Drio produces another 45 megawatt. Now you may got nuclear hydro, which me are more similar by building separate power lines because the power lines now you may got, I mean, on a load also 50 megawatt. It can carry maximum of 20 megawatt or 25 megawatt. So M21 plus a big plus challenge. So we need to take into account the cost of community projects expected from every respective SOEs, whereby they cannot really make any profit or money. And then we keep expecting them to declare profit. For me, more than profit, the extent of service we can give it to our people, that opposition leader correctly said, when are we going to connect the entire country by grid? You know, and also we have the geographical challenge whereby plenty of low, you mean to stop low island, remote areas where hard low, you mean by, unless you mean got also in Europe technology where you mean can pull him uh, power line underneath the Sita Sol, you can connect him to the you know, remote islands. And another one challenge, Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that uh, Minister has mentioned about uh, the ADB uh, uh, policy based loan. Mr. Speaker, I'm thankful for me negotiating this uh, policy based loan. It's purely on a very, very minor reforms. You know, I'm all dictating me play to talk about these reforms where start with like merit based appointment. For me, if you give importance to that merit-based appointment, which I'm sure currently it's uh, right now it's happening, then 50% of the problems can be solved purely on merit-based appointment. And then appointing one player, you know, uh, female director in each board, uh, being transparent, uh, you know, publishing our accounts report and all those things. So th these are basic things for any businesses to do. And that's what we agreed. And ADB has approved uh, 500 million US dollar. And Minister have clearly stated in his statement that uh, so far 860 million received in Kina in uh, 2021 and another 850 million received in December 2022. That is almost 1.7 billion Kina, you know, to give budget support based on these policy reforms. And I'm thankful that government uh, finally has helped KCH, you know, part of this money to help some of these uh, entities like PNG Power, uh, Air New Guinea, uh, which are, you know, financially uh, suffering. One thing also we need to notice, uh, Mr. Speaker, is that many times we blame all the SOEs. I want to look at it differently that, you know, government being a major customer to all those SOEs, be it water, be it electricity, be it uh, telecommunication. You know how much government was, as we speak right now, at this time? Government was PNG power 46 million kina. Then how you were expecting all low, go now, buying bills low, Pumana, kissing diesel, now buying diesel, now supply low, province. Yeah, province people are suffering no good through. And uh, governor, uh, governor ECP can talk, okay? Province here, some time, two weeks continuously, no power. Even lo Kimbe, people are giving power to solo, residents in the hospital to solo. Lo half where me sleep yet, people are also buying 300 liters diesel, lo every two days once. Every two days once, people are burning 300 liters. Now, to this la agony, this anxiety of lo, arim sound lo generator, na, you buy pro no good to do. Time generator cut off. Em all got a tenant to buy suffer, you to buy suffer, business buy suffer, you know, na, you pass him store, and all got this la something. Eh? Provinces are the most suffering. One plus suggestion that shall me like to talk and Prime Minister to support him this la thing thing. Why not PNG Power focus on this la profitable grid? Where Port Mosby grid, a Ramu grid, a Gessel grid. This la triple a major grid where him shall make him profit lo PNG Power. Now you rouse him some la unprofitable you know, operations. Also Kimbe, KVN, uh, Vivek, uh, Daru. All this la up here and PNG Power makes loss. Meaning PNG Power by hard throw to bring him fuel come inside of this la locations. Now cost of producing power it's almost like one kina 20 toya. And they, have, they are forced to sell it for 80 toya, 90 toya. Mr. Speaker, in the last 10 years, you may not allow in PNG power for political reason. You may pour it no good through also. Suppose you may up in price all public by Koros and Islaya. But the public also need to know what is the real cost of production of power, or generation of power. That it's costing one kina 20 toya and your PNG power is expected to sell it for 80 toya and 90 toya. Then how do you expect that organization to make profit? Obviously, whatever the profit they make, they have to cover the losses from these loss making centers off outside. So, me suggestion to me also, why not you cut him off this loss making operations? Yeah? Now, give him the respective provincial government in partnership with, uh, you know, proper, for example, Lokimbe, okay, you may partner with them, New Britain Palm Oil. Now, you may run in this law operation also. It's a loss making operation anyway. So, why are you like holding this loss making operations, you know, causing a heavy law? the company where it has the potential to generate, you know, huge income and also continue to do the service. So, and me looking at Muslim, now you got political will, and uh, minister making uh, some plus strong plus statement, now I'm suggesting this like eight point or ten point uh, key reforms, the key areas, where suppose I'm through through me implementing, then there is uh, hope, you mean no need of uh, panic, or you mean no need of fire sale, 
Mr. Speaker, fire sale is the easiest option. You can work in also how you may shall we give up the PNG Bissina. Of course, it, it makes a big difference when you have, uh, you know, a private company running an organization. So one suggestion uh, posed by opposition leader too, to talk about public-private uh, partnership for this organization where NAS fund can involve, uh, provincial governments can involve, so that this organization also can be revived and also it gives the additional support from the expertise from these respective organizations who has been running you know, businesses rather than the government continue to run this one as a 100% uh, government entity. The, the cost of production for PNG power in many sense through diesel, it costs more than one kina. Even the supposed to be the low cost you know, power, they talk about gas, they talk about hydro, they talk about uh, you know, other uh, solar and other options. Solar, you may not got no major commercial ones. I'll work low. I think some misunderstanding low this law, 15 years, all, you know, meaning, I mean, no, meaning low, 15 years and by taking low reform, that the great upgrade program, because now me looking, you know, got issue low power generation, most be great, you plug out plenty power stuff. You plug out new power, you plug out DDO, you plug out Edebu, uh, and most of these ones are, you know, much better power than the diesel source. The, the issue of these 15 years is like mostly on the grid upgrade, like upgrading most be grid, upgrading that Ramu grid, upgrading that Gessel grid, which I believe the minister has already, you know, embarked into implementing those uh, upgrading of that major grids. That is the main reason, in, especially in this all major three grids, for the continuous fluctuation of uh, black, I mean, uh, power and also the blackout issue is all caused by this uh, lack of upgrade to all this very, very old infrastructure. Not 15 years, but within the next two or three years, I feel that, that major upgrades uh, can be done for these three major grids. The, the, the main point, uh, Mr. Speaker, is to allow or uh, to focus PNG Power on the profitable organizations. And also for the government, I'm, I'm talking about 46 million government owes to PNG Power. At any point of time, government owes like at least 200 to 300 million kina. We, we need to also meet uh, the, uh, our commitments. We need to honor our commitments. And, and uh, there is no point of talking about uh, you know, fire sale, which is not uh, going to make any, any good thing for this organization. But right now, we have that political will to, trans I mean, to turn around uh, this, this company. It has been a, a challenging company. It's the three companies which are like, you know, most challenging in, in SOEs. Are like number one is like PNG Power. Number two is like uh, uh, Air New Guinea. Uh, number three is like telecom in terms of you know its operational difficulties. I I appreciate the minister's uh, determination to you know bring much needed changes for this uh, uh, energy company, national energy company, and I wish him all the best. And you know we hope to see some positive changes in this organisation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.